Hey guys, how's it going? So, as you can see, I have the UMIC Mic 1 right here, and that can only mean one thing. It's REW calibration time. So, we're going to get this all hooked up. I'm going to show you how to go through the setup process step by step, and then we're going to get into taking some measurements, and then uh, looking through those measurements, and then using that information, using the Odyssey calibration app. I'm going to EQ my system so it sounds just a little bit better or a lot better. We'll find out. So let's go. Okay, so here's everything you're going to need to calibrate your system with REW. First and foremost, you're going to need a microphone. This is the UMIC Mic 1 from Mini DSP. Uh, shortly after buying this, they came out with the UMIC Mic 2, but uh, there's a few differences, but nothing drastic. It's not going to make a huge difference. Um, if you don't use this or the UMIC Mic 2, you're going to need a calibration mic from um, Dayton Audio or a few other companies. And then with that, since it's going to be an XLR input, you're going to need an audio interface. But this is the easiest way. This mic um, usually goes for $100 um, after shipping and handling. Um, then you're going to need a mic stand. Any run-of-the-mill mic stand will do. You don't need anything terribly expensive. This is a onstage mic stand I got from Sweetwater. It's like 30 bucks. And then other things that come in handy but are not necessary are the uh, headphones. And then what does come in handy, and this is just useful too if you just want to calibrate your system for SPL and get it to reference level, is a SPL meter. And then, of course, you'll need a laptop or a Mac and then a cord, um, usually HDMI, to hook up to your uh, receiver or processor. So, in this case, I'm using a Mac. So, I'll be taking you through the step-by-step -step process of configuring your Mac to get it set up to properly use with REW and the UMIC Mic 1 to uh, take some measurements. Um, as far as I can tell, there isn't any videos on YouTube that run you through every single step in the process. And um, when first you and when you're first using this, uh, it can be kind of confusing as to getting it uh, properly set up because it's not just simply um, plug and play. There's a few steps you have to go through and changes you have to make in your um, in your Mac or Windows PC and in REW preferences itself to get it to uh, work right. So I'll be taking you through that. So first of all obviously you're going to need to hook it up. Uh, this is an older MacBook Air so I had to use I had to use a, a mini display port to HDMI and then I connected that to my AV receiver. It helps if you have a long one. This is the longest I have, but it'll do. Okay, some of the things you're going to need to make sure you do is you need to make sure that no one is in the room with you. No, uh, no kids, no animals, no one that could basically make noise. Um, it's important that the theater is as quiet as it possibly can be. Also, I am in a basement and my furnace is right behind my uh, main entrance to the theater, hidden behind uh, some closet doors, and it can get uh, decently loud, uh, and that's obviously going to affect the measurements. So I went ahead and turned that off so that it does not um, affect my measurements that I get. And make sure when you're doing this also that you yourself are as quiet as possible and you don't move. It's best to be in an area where your body is not going to affect the measurements. Okay, so make sure you have your microphone uh, set at your listening position. Make sure it is pointing up uh, 90 degrees and it is at ear level with where you are sitting. So for me and my theater, um, it's approximately about 40 inches off the ground is where my ear is. 
So I have it set there at the position of basically left of where my head is, and that's where we're gonna take our first set of measurements for all seven speakers on the bed layer. And then we'll move the mic over a little bit to be on the right side of my head, and we'll take more measurements there. So the rest of this video from here on out is just going to be screen capture. So some parts of this video are going to be a combination of screen sharing and the video capture from my iPhone. And uh, I have no idea how long this is going to take, but I'm going to be measuring uh, seven speakers as well as two subwoofers, and I'm going to do those and I'm gonna do those sets of measurements twice. So this is probably gonna end up being an incredibly long video, which I'll end up splitting out probably into multiple 10 to 15 minute parts. So this will be kind of a series of how to use, uh, set up and calibrate your home theater with REW. All right, so first I'm going to run you through the setup process of getting your Mac. Um, set up right to display the information on your TV or projector. So you'll go to the Mac, System Preferences, Displays. You're going to get these two menus. Basically the exact same thing. Not sure why both of them are showing up. But you'll optimize for click and click your receiver. And in this case, it's Marantz AVR. And then go over, and this is the important part. Hit scaled and large text, the largest text. If you do not do this, it will try to match the resolution, the maximum resolution of whatever display you have it connected to. This happens to be a 4K Epson projector and it'll show up extremely small and extremely hard to um, read. Um, and it'll do that on both the laptop and the output to whatever display you have it connected to. So make sure you hit scaled, hit the largest text, and then you'll be able to read it. So once you got that going, click out of there. Next, you're going to get all the audio inputs and outputs configured on your Mac, and then you're going to do that for REW. So first thing you need to do is go back to System Preferences, go to Sound. And sometimes this stuff is done automatically, but it doesn't hurt to run through all the steps and check everything. So you're going to make sure that the input is the UMIC mic one or whatever mic if or whatever microphone you happen to be using so in this case it's already selected then go to output and then make sure it's outputting through your HDMI so that's already selected it'll usually recognize whatever you have connected so again it's the Marantz AVR connection type HDMI. So those have already been selected. We're good to go there. Click out. Next thing you need to do, and this is really important if you're going to be calibrating a 5.1 system or a 7.1 system uh, because it'll default to two channel originally. So go to the spotlight, type in audio MIDI setup. All right, and there's a few things you have to do here. So first, uh, find your mic and make sure it's connected. Uh, make sure it recognizes it. Hit input, and that's already done. Then go to HDMI, and the UMIC mic one has a fixed sample rate of 48 kilohertz and 16-bit resolution. So you'll need to go to format and find the 8-channel 16-bit in the 48 kilohertz section if you're using the UMIC Mic 1. So I've already done that, so I'm just going to click out and then go to configure speakers. And again, I've already done this, but normally it defaults to 2-channel. So if you have this selected, then 
REW is only going to be able to calibrate and recognize two speakers, your front left and right. So this is going to be used if you were just doing stereo sound for a two-channel music system. But I am calibrating my uh, Dolby Atmos home theater. So you're going to want to click 7.1 rear surround and that'll change and give you this layout and then it'll number it accordingly. So left front is one, right is two, center is three, subwoofers are four, left surround five, right surround six, left rear surround seven, right rear surround eight. You can change this order in any way you want, but it's best if you just leave it as the default numbering. Now at this time, um, there is no option to have REW or uh, your Mac recognize more than seven speakers. So I will not be able to um, calibrate my Dolby Atmos theater speakers right now. I may be able to find a workaround and if I do I will make another video and explain how to do that but right now um, it only recognizes 7.1 so essentially all the most important speakers, the bed layer speakers, will be measured. Um, any number of subwoofers you have will be measured. But um, to be honest, I'm not completely worried about calibrating the Dolby Atmos speakers because for the most part, they're just an added benefit to your overall sound. And still, even with new modern Dolby Atmos sound mixes, you're not going to get a whole lot of information going to those. Those are really just for um, added effects and ambiance and um, are really going to only show through in sci-fi movies, action movies, things like that. If you're just watching your standard, um, you know, like comedy or drama or just your average television show, you're not really going to get a whole lot of information going to those height channels the most important speakers are going to be your uh, main seven speakers. And more than anything, it's going to be the center channel uh, that is the most important, followed by your front left and right, and then your subwoofers, because all your dialogue comes into the center, and then everything else goes left and right, and then of course low frequencies go to the sub, so it's not that much of a concern right now. All right, so hit apply. And done. And you can click out of that. And then you're done with setup as far as your Mac is concerned. Next, you'll need to set up REW correctly. So go ahead and open it. Then go to the preference bar over here. Go to sound card. Now this is, uh, this is the important stuff. So output device, make sure it is set to HDMI or however you're getting audio from your uh, Mac or your laptop into your uh, receiver. So in this case, it's already selected HDMI. Input device, select your microphone. Again, it's already been selected, the UMIC mic one gain of 18 dB, that's already set. And then output, make sure you hit speaker. And then from this little menu right here, you'll be able to see everything that you will be able to run your sweeps through. So left, right, left plus right, center, LFE, surround left, surround right, surround back left, and surround back right. Sweep level, usually, uh, it is recommended by REW that you just leave this alone at negative 20 dBFS. So that's all set. Next, you'll need to upload your calibration file. So you're going to want to browse for that desktop documents. All right, make sure you upload the 90 degree angle. So open, all right, all set. You don't really need to worry too much about the other menus. 
Next, you'll go into the mic meter tab and make sure you hit mic or Z weighted SPL meter. And then note, it says right here that C weighted SPL meter, if you are using a C weighted SPL meter as the input device for REW. So that's kind of an older way of calibrating your system. Uh, that's not what you're going to be using in this case or in my case. So if so you'll notice that it says if you are using a microphone as the input to REW or an SPL meter with Z weighting, which means it does not have any weight curve applied, choose mic or Z weighted SPL. So in this case, I'm obviously using a mic, so I hit that. You don't really need to worry about anything in these other tabs right here. The most important stuff has already been done. All right, so now you're just about ready to start taking some measurements with your microphone. There's one last step you got to do. So you're going to need your SPL meter. Go to measure. And this is where you're going to adjust the master volume on your AVR or your processor. So with an SPL meter, set it to C weighting and fast response and select the level of 60 dB to 90 dB. Now holding it up close to your microphone position, hit check level. So you're going to be looking for a level of 75 decibels. So you're going to need to bump it up or down to get to that level. So I need to hit it up just a little bit more because that first measurement was about 69 dB. So I'm going to try negative 15 dB. And hold it up there again and check levels. Okay, perfect. So once you have the pink noise level from REW hitting 75 decibels, you're ready to start taking your measurements. So we want this test to be mostly full range. So make sure you start at around 10 hertz and then you go up to uh, 22,000 kilohertz is where I like to start. Um, generally, human hearing is in the range of 20 to 20,000, but it uh, is pretty useful if you get information that goes just a little bit beyond that so you know exactly what your speaker is capable of doing because a lot of the times your speaker can go up uh, pretty high. Some can even reach into the 30, 40, or 50,000 kilohertz range. Um, but for our purposes, we're going to start at 10 and go all the way up to uh, 22,000. So one last thing that I almost forgot to mention is for a home theater, you're going to nine times out of 10 not have full range loudspeakers that are capable of going down to the 20 hertz level or the subsonic frequencies of 10 hertz and below. Um, and in that case, most people have dedicated LFE uh, channels and multiple subwoofers hooked up. But for this test, you're going to be measuring each speaker individually. So you're going to want to go into your. So you're going to want to go into the back. So you're going to want to turn off your subwoofers when you're taking these tests, because you don't want that to interfere with the measurements you're getting from whatever speaker you're measuring. Now, in most cases, you're obviously sending frequencies below a certain point to the LFE channel because you know that the drivers in them are not capable of going that low, and thus you're going to send that information to the subs. Now, we'll measure subs later, but when you're measuring each individual speaker, you're going to want to turn off the subwoofers, otherwise your system is going to clip, and then you're never going to be able to take measurements. So go to the back of your subwoofers and turn them all the way down 